Can't wait to get another monitor. All right, so back here with Junda Shadow, we're gonna mulligan this. Uh, we'll keep this. It's not that great. I might as well put this on top because it's a redraw to Delirium. But in my experience, very few people play Death Shadow in the challenges. Alright, looks like we're playing against Storm now. And the, the bobble also gives us a little bit of data. They went top top. Bobble lets us know what we want to do with this scry. Or with our fetch land. So I'm going to assume that we want Inquisition. So let's go here. Remand. Okay, so we're playing against like a twin deck. Is Tron a favorable matchup for blue white? Is that is that legit? That's best draw on the deck. So this gets overgrown tomb. It might get breeding pool. How much black are we gonna want to do? I think I'm gonna get breeding pool because the breeding pool is just the blue spell is just gonna be that good. Oh, Bloodstain Wild doesn't get it. I'm still getting used to that. Because, like, now that my off fetch land is, uh, my off fetch land now is Breeding Pool instead of Stomping Ground, Bloodstain Mire used to fetch my off stomp, my off fetch land, but it doesn't do it anymore. All right, that was a pretty good draw. So, let's go this first. We know two out of the three cards, three out of the five cards. We should at least get a little bit of information. Breach Emerald Cool, yep, that's also pretty legit. This is going to let us know. Oh, there's the Pester Mite. So I'll take this Snapcaster. So I actually think I'm just going to Abrupt Decay this now. Because I want to next turn have my traverse taken on or traverse on, and I want to uh, make this as difficult, um, just make this difficult to deal with. Like, because I don't want them to like be able to sit with this pester mite and like ping me, ping me, ping me. All right, so I'm just going to traverse for a time of life and play Death Shadow. And then hope my opponent just doesn't perfect me here. So let's traverse. Or a Tarmogoyf. Play this fetch the land. Play Tarmogoyfs. Every day we're going for this game. Crypt Commander, it's not a halfway bad draw. Are we looting? Nope, that's a good draw. I guess we'll get blood we'll get blood crypt. We're top decking, so it's not like we can we're gonna need to top deck two blue spells. And teamer battle rage is lethal next turn. Polluted Delta. So we know, again, three out of the f two out of three cards for my opponent. That's pretty good. Let's crack for nine. My opponent can start Snapcaster. Oh, Crypt Commander me. That's going to be kind of annoying. But if he goes like, we can at least fight the tap draw shenanigans. Loot house, okay. I assume he discards an island. Yeah. Island art's pretty cool. And this is neat because of this dismember. Even if he, like, both of these creatures are lethal and he doesn't know it. Which is going to be nice. My opponent can go, like, can play two, can go like untap, untap here now, which is a bit annoying. I'm gonna have to use my noggin here if I'm gonna figure out like how much life to pay with these because I don't want to lose to like Pestermite, Bolt, Bolt, 
which my opponent theoretically could have if my opponent's like drawn drawn it here they could they could have that so i'm probably just going to pay two life off this dismember all right my opponent kept a card on top so let's see what they kept on top to hopefully give us a little bit of information about what they're drawing into electrolyze okay my opponent's probably trying to burn us at this point What is this? What is this play? They let me attack, and they didn't flash in a dude. I mean, they would need like Snapcaster plus. They would need to. They need to block both creatures. They don't know it, but both creatures are lethal. So again, I think I'm just going to pay two mana here because my opponent, I'm going to pay two mana for this because my opponent, the only thing that my opponent can have is like remand. I guess they can have like a snapcast or a chump. Yeah, so they got snapcast or a chump. That's what we did. So he eats this. Our opponent's going to electrolyze and then one rando. And it's not a cryptic command, because if it's a cryptic command, it's an op. So he probably puts this in the bottom, because this doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah. So he's got two looks. And that seals the game. Unless my opponent hits a combo piece. We're going to let that go. Put a card on the bottom. All right, they loot. Digital land. All right, got him. Got him. All right, so I like all the counter magic. I don't like the red cards. Um, I like the spell bombs. I like some of the. I like the collective brutalities. Um, I like to cut some of the pushes, but not all of them. And I like to cut some Inquisitions because I'm bringing these in. I don't necessarily love the Dismember. I could see cutting a Dismember also and then keeping in like a Fatal Push. Um, sometimes I like Liliana the Last Hope because it can tick up and hit the Pestermite, but it's like certainly not great. Um, yeah, we're off. So like... I don't think Ranger's very good right now because it's like... So it used to be where all the Fatal Push matchups didn't have Damnation, and now all the Fatal Push matchups have Damnation. And Ranger's not good against Damnation. Yes, Kozilek's Return can break up the combo, but I, I think that's a little narrow. But so is Last Hope if we're, we're going to be... On the same spectrum there. I guess I want one more removal spell. I think I'm going to have to be the dismember. Can also be cast under moon. Yep. That's why these uh, the old abrupt decays are staying in. Oh, I should update my stream decker. <coughs> I think I have the my most updated build here on here. Let me look if this is what I'm doing. Yep, this is the current my current build here. 
minus a ranger in the sideboard. I've got minus a ranger and a disdainful stroke, and I've got two Nile spell bombs. Yeah, this hand's good. We will keep this. It's not great. We're going to have to probably hold up around this Blood Moon on turn two. All right, we'll play this. Probably not going to fetch because if I draw another fetch land, then that can be a basic and this can be a blue source. So I don't really want to fetch at the moment. Oh, shoot. Now, I probably would have hit that. All right, that makes me feel a little bit better. So I guess now I'm going to go like this. And then we're just going to pass. And I'll have stub up. And then I'll try to play a Liliana probably. How do we beat a moon? We don't. We don't we don't play this deck to worry about blood moon, my friend. That is not what we are worried about. Alright, here comes a moron. It's the worst one. You got it, sir. So we're just going to fetch now in Brutality this. My opponent's got the moon. They've got the moon. And we'll, we will move on. Do you wanna, I probably want to escalate with two modes. So we want to go minus two, minus two. Cast. We can go here, here. And we're actually going to discard this Blood Crypt because it doesn't cast anything in our deck. I'm going to take Opt because we can trade, probably trade Crypto Command with this next turn when we play Liliana. Dude, it's brutal. Okay, nice. Oh, we played Mom and Pop. I should have known that. That was stupid. That was stupid, I say. That's not what I want to do. Oh, God. We're making all kinds of plays. Um, So I think I'm just going to Edict this. It'll get me closer to Delirium so that I can go get me some Death Shadows. I didn't think this all the way through. I don't really want to tick it. I guess I could tick up. Is ticking up better than getting rid of these doctors? Dicking up, trading my Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I'm going to trade. I'm going to make it so my Tarmogoyf shuts this down more. And now I've got Delirium. Pwned is Cryptic. It appears they're on the little moron beatdown plan. All right, so let's go like this. Hope my opponent didn't draw a lightning bolt. If they drew a lightning bolt, we're in good shape. So I'm going to dash out. So we kind of got a two for one out of this engineer explosives, right? Like this EE, we got to make a card out of this Tarmogoyf while wasting this EE. So, like, we effectively made it so we could turn this, you know, this Tarmogoyf into, like, a two-for-one. Because, like, 
As long as we don't draw another Tarmogoyf. If we draw another Tarmogoyf, then it's not that great. But... I'm probably just going to dismember this. How much life do I want to pay? There's no way, right, that he can sacrifice this, deal two damage to target creature. So I might as well just pay two life. Yeah, so we're just going to pay two life with this. If his last card's Lightning Bolt, his last card's Lightning Bolt. This at least makes it difficult for an attack. Is this any artifact or is it a Thopter? Okay. All right, Drew Roast. All right. I guess I did not play around Roast. All right, better lucky than good. We're still not out of the woods. So next turn I'll attack. I guess we go to one here. So my opponent effectively just attacks with everything. Oh, attacks with two. They attack with two. They've got three artifacts to shoot at me. Two, four. So I think I'm dead unless I can find a way to kill this P and Q Nalar. What? What did he do? Wow, this gives us a chance. I think, unless... So he just exiled his entire graveyard. Now we've got a shot. Because now I edict... He probably gets rid of one of these. And then I've got like two redraws. I can't attack. But I get at least one more redraw. The suspense... Look at the top card because it doesn't matter. We can't affect ours. Opponent is drawing a land. So again, we just pass and we hope to hit a removal spell for this Thopter right here. That's not it. See if our opponent hits it. They saw it. All right. So I think I just got a little too aggressive with what I was doing there. Like I think I made some mistakes <coughs> in the middle of that game where I could have done a little bit better. Maybe I handcuffed my draw a little bit also. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I think we want to just keep it, keep it like it is. I probably handcuffed my draw a little bit also. Like I was playing a little too cautiously maybe. If I, if I F6'd, I probably should have stubbed that... E on two. Because, like, if I'm not playing my Tarmor Wife on two, like, why? What am I doing with it, you know? Like, Tarmor Wife is meant to be played on two. All right, we'll keep this. This is going to be an aggressive Death Shadow hand. Hoping to find, like, a discard spell. We don't want that. So this land gets us Overgrown Tomb. Uh, 
Swamp's not a terrible draw, so the, both of those both of those lands were terrible draws. I want a spell so that I can turn on Delirium at least. That's what we're looking for. I thought about playing a Death Shadow build that has just four colors in it. Um, and playing like a couple Snapcasters in the board. Like just boarding for boarding like three or four Snapcaster mages instead of boarding all of the whatever it is, the Lingering Souls. So I might I might try something like that out later in the week. Because it could just make my mana base easier. It can free up a sideboard slot. I can fit like two Kologons commands in my 75 somewhere just because like the Snapcaster Kologons command loop is always great. And you 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 can get there against like these other mid-range decks. I think it helps me in every matchup except Abzan because they've got their own Lingering Souls. And it's just going to be hard to chew through that many Souls tokens. I went 3-2 with Storm. Yep, internet crapped out, came back, lost to Death Shadow, and then beat like a, beat the Mardu deck. I was pretty happy with the performance. Like, <clears throat> I played Storm, and four out of my five matchups were Thoughtseize decks, and I went 3-2 and two in my first league. It's like, you know, I'm all about it. All right, what do we got? What are you going to give us off the top here? Something good. A dismember is all right. So we'll F6 through this. There's no need. If my opponent wants to trade a card with this right now, then like whatever. So we need to get our extra X value. I'm going to turn the tea water back on. I'd like to say I am so incredibly hyped up to be sleeping until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. That gets me all sorts of excited. I've been waking up at like 5 way too much, way too often here. And I will be excited to sleep in tomorrow. Probably still going to wake up at like 6.30 because I struggle a little bit sleeping past that. But All right, my opponent's just like wasting our time. So that I was working on, I should rename this, Properties. Oh, my opponent's back now. You just played a Delta. No, I mean I'll take seven all the day. Like if I can if I can sleep till seven, it's 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 very nice. Left a little water in my teapot, I can hear it crackling. I wouldn't hate drawing a street wraith here. So that means I can just play my Death Shadow willy-nilly. And put the squeeze on my opponent a little bit. That's a pretty good draw. So do I want to expose my Death Shadow to a Lightning Bolt? We didn't see a Bolt in Game 2, so maybe my opponent boarded them out. We're going high. We're going high optimized, high, high risk, high reward magic right here. And I'm already at ten. If my opponent bolts my shadow, it's not bolting me. We got an island. They are opting. I wonder if I should hit. How does Harvest Pyre read?
one red X is your additional arm fire exile X cards from your graveyard. All right, my opponent fetches, then I'll pop this relic. Because I need to do three damage to this in order to get it, and I don't want to give them priority to do that. Oh, it's not about that life. Hey, how's it going there, Farby? That's not bad. Draw. That makes me want to wait one sit on this Liliana one turn so that I can play it with Stub back up. And now I can have Dismember up. And uh, and the Spell Bomb. It's been a hot minute, Farby. How have you been? Again, if my opponent gives me priority, okay. Now I'm going to wait, just because I don't want to get, like, snapcastered, opted, give them some value out of that. So I'll go like this, go to combat. Oh, nice, good for you. All right, so we are going to be able to resolve this Liliana, which is going to be great. We'll eat this Pestermite. Yeah, what are you up to in Potsdam tomorrow? Now, we kind of give our opponent the option to Harvest Pyre this Death Shadow right now, but I don't think they have that many. And we can use our stub. I really want to save this stub for a blood moon, but I would take I would I would stub a harvest fire. Mom and Pop. I think I'm gonna dismember this. I think I'm gonna dismember this. Well dismember traverse play. I guess I can do that on the other turn, let's let's get a little more information. Okay. The in-screen chat is broken. Let's fix that. Going to double Q. Oh, nice. So let me get in here and we fix this up. I can't wait to have two screens. It's going to happen. We should be good now. Let me get my coffee or my uh, tea. What's going on? The old Twitch chat. I'll have to check it out. It could be that it didn't. That's, fr that's frustrating. So I think I'm just going to tick up. can't reasonably dismember this, I don't think. I can go to six. I can check with the Thoughtseize. 
ditch this, traverse, play. Or I can go like ditch. Double check the layering in the chat window. Are you talking about an OBS? In OBS, I'm good. Oh, the struggle. I think I go Thought Seize, play this Verdant Catacombs, tick up, make him chump, and then I have Stub, because now he has to block. All right, so we get rid of Kiki Jiki. He's got a chump block now. I tick up, discard this this dismember, traverse for another death shadow, and play the death shadow. And now both creatures are lethal. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, that pisses me off when my chat's not working. He drew a Scalding Tarn. Yeah, I'm sorry the chat's not working. We're gonna let... What if I just stub this? Hang on. If I stub this and he goes exactly electrolyzed in a lightning bolt, I die. So we're not going to do that. Yeah, that's frustrating. My chat's not working. I'm sorry about that. So now I stub this. Edict. He's dead. Because we got perfect information. Unless he hits my Liliana, and then he then he would have to draw runner runner lightning bolt. He has to he has to electrolyze my Liliana. He's got electrolyze Lily. You dead man. You are dead, sir. All right, let me. Let me just add scene two, add. Oh, God, this is so unprofessional. We're going to go like this just while I try to fix my, uh, just while I try to fix this again. I don't really want the whole world out here. Just give me one second. Let me get into this dashboard. Give me one second, and then we'll get another match going. I am going to have to fix this anyways. So let me go pop out chat. All right, we should be in good shape now. I mean, we should. By, by saying we should, like, you know, I think it should work, but I'm not a super... I don't super know how all this stuff is working so well. And if the chat doesn't show up, I'll fix it in between. I'll fix it by tomorrow, by, by, uh, sun, by Saturday. So Saturday, I'm going to stream the Modern Challenge here, so... I don't even know when is that. Let me go over here. I think it's like... I'm just going to open all these because I'm on tilt. We got the first four sucked.
I just saw them all. And then after my last reaction, how bad we opened, 60. We got a resto. We got a trial. God, what a terrible set of chests. I have no idea what a restoration angel's worth. Yeah, it's frustrating that it's not showing up. Oh, Sandy Dog, MTG. This guy is like an aggro player to... So a very good aggro player. I'm going to need to draw Death Shadow. This hand's pretty good besides that. I don't think I've ever beat, I don't beat Sandy Dog MTG very often. If ever, now that I think about it. He's just a very, very good player. Plays traditionally, just plays aggro decks. I think you could, you saw, what's his name? Um, Jerry Thompson was talking about him on the, uh, on his podcast, he was talking about how when he decided that he could play blue black for worlds, he said he beat Sandy Dog MTG, and he did, uh, like uh, the tournament before and he determined he could do it. So I want to draw Death Shadow. It's not Death Shadow. Do 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 do. We need to draw like Death Shadow or Fetchland Traverse while using Stub. That's what we need. Because if we get a if we get a Death Shadow, we should with how this hand is, we should be all set. All set. God, what is my opponent just holding priority for? Yeah, so I'm gonna set up another screen a screen change because like a scene another scene because I'm gonna be playing uh, the challenge. All right. So we're going to take Goblin Guy because we can't answer it. And it's just going to beat us in the face. Um, so that I can just like in between rounds just be out of there. Just say like, hey, we're in between rounds or something like that. And if I leave early, I'll play like something else on the side in the league. That's probably fun. Probably play like some middle league meme deck or something like that. Something that's quick. It's pretty frustrating that my chat's not there though. You're all saying such intelligent things. Chat is off the chain. There's chat is saying more things than you can shake a stick at. This is frustrating that my opponent is like just doing whatever they want instead of playing magic with me, especially while I'm I have all you fantastic seven people here. And thank you all for showing up. Very tired. That'll happen. I appreciate everybody showing up here and hanging out tonight. So they drew that. So they probably suspend a Rift Bolt. And then we'll probably... I don't know. I'm not going to force... I'm definitely not going to force this Stubborn Denial. Because my opponent easily could... Maybe... God, what's 3 a.m.? Where are you where are you from? Gosh, come on, dude. You're spending a rift bolt. In Spain? Nice. On another side note, I'm almost a third of the way to being mon to getting my videos monetized on YouTube. Which is cool. Come on, man. Okay, there we go, the Rift Bolts. All right. 
So now, Rift Bolt Suspend. So I'm probably going to take this Lightning Bolt because you can point it at my Death Shadow. And then we'll pass. This hits me. I go to 8. I can then deal with this Boros Charm. I go to 9, so my Stubborn Denial will turn on for the rest of the game. So I've got two burn spells covered. So now the game's, the game's over now that we drew Death Shadow. I, mean, I guess if he draws an Eidolon, that could be difficult. Eidolon exactly would be pretty annoying. Again, I want like a fetch land because like that can turn on abrupt decay, accelerate this clock a little bit. Get our homeboy in play. So. If my opponent had a one mana burn spell. They should have. They should have sent it off there. My opponent borrows charms me down to four. I think we're gonna let it happen. Yeah, they're not going to. There's the wooded foothills. All right, before combat, we'll Inquisition, because this is either going to force the Boros Charm. And I'm probably not going to counter this first Boros Charm. And again, we'll take this, because it's going to take it so three, it's going to take three, three mana removals, or burn spells to kill me. I don't know if I'm going to stub this. My, I don't think I'm going to because it makes it a two-turn clock if he skull cracks me, which he's not going to. Which is a good play. I mean, he's in a tough spot, so they've like it's a it's not good. And by not burning me, he is playing to his outs. We're going to cast this because Boros Charm is the only thing that punishes us. Okay. Now, one, if one burn spell comes through, it, kill, it kills him. So it's kind of like handcuffs him. He has to basically kill me this turn. Or... Yeah, he's basically got to kill me. Now, I would love to draw, like... A Thought Seize. Something to initiate Bloodstained Winners. He's got a Wooded Foothills. Probably just, like, miserably flooding out. So my opponent's got a skull crack. So my opponent's got exactly if my opponent can cast all the spells in their hand, they'll kill me. But if they can't, then I kill them. And I think it's worth going for that there. And I believe they have a Wooded Foothills. I thought they had two. But he could have gone like one, two here. So now I'm good. Because he didn't have, because now I can't cast another spell. We go to two, we kill him. All right. 
All right, I think we're gonna bring in this. I like bringing these in on the draw. I like cutting two street rates and one thought sees. Again, like it's a bit of a rough, like it, it, you, you get like really weird draws where like if you draw either, if you can somehow get away, like if you draw any of these, you need to draw like two of these. A combination, you need to draw like a death shadow and then one sideboard card and you can't lose. But if you, I find if you don't draw those, then this matchup gets pretty dicey. <laughs> because you have to, like, when you're playing against this deck, you have to thread the needle. Where you have to get down, like, you have to enact your game plan, enact your game plan, enact your game plan. And it doesn't work unless you can flip the switch. And when you can flip the switch, that's like Death Shadow lets you flip the switch. Where it's like, oh god, I can't kill you anymore. You have to kill me. And the reason why I keep some street rates in is because if I take all the street rates out, delirium becomes too difficult. And if you don't have delirium, that cuts off a lot of your owls. God, the fact that I don't have a chat is so tilting. It's like, gosh damn it. I can't wait until after Christmas when I have two monitors. Maybe I'll play Christmas music for the entire challenge. Maybe that'll be a good idea. <clears throat> Alright man, don't don't take up all my time. I beat Sandy Dog one time before, but just one time. I think I tend to play decks that are pretty good against what he does. Like, he was playing Mardu Vehicles when I was playing Teamer, and I beat I beat up on him there. I beat up on him. I beat him in a Mox. I don't know who he is, but I know that is a that like like I remember Jerry Thompson saying like. So this is, again, this is like if we draw Death Shadow, this hand's the same. If we don't draw Death Shadow, we're probably not good. We got Delirium, which we're going to go, you can't mulligan this hand. You got eight outs for Death Shadow. But I remember Jerry Thompson saying, like, pretty clearly, like, I can play blue-black control at Worlds because he beat Sandy Dog when they were playing Mono Red. All right, no creature's good. All right, so there's a threat. Problem is we gotta take some damage to play that threat, but let's see what's on top of our opponent's library. At least it's gonna be a big goif. If we can hit an Eidolon, that's probably a pretty big game. Maybe I just go, maybe we just give up. The problem is we don't have a green red land. So I kind of need to go Blood Crypt and then like Breeding Pool. At least we don't have an Inquisition. This sucks because no matter what, like his turn next turn's really good. So I might as well just try to break up his efficiency a little bit and take a lava spike. Make it so he can only double spell for one turn. I don't know. Like, he definitely could be. He's just gonna go Rift Bolt Lava Spike. Sandy Dog's a DB grinder. I think he has top eight at a GP before. I just remember Thompson speaking highly of him. And the game podcast. The game podcast is probably my favorite magic place. Oh, wow. He lightning helix me. So he's got nine points of burn in his hand. So I just... We got to get some of that out of there. Probably take... Lightning helix... And then I think I'm just going to get an Overgrown Tomb. I don't see... I don't think we win this game. Because I think I need to be able to cast Tarmogoyf. And I'll just take this Lava Spike to give us some time. Alright. 
Bonnet, Bonnet drew a Swiss Spear, which is a pretty good draw. So we're at a virtual Dr. Grizzant, thank you very much. I appreciate the follow. Death Shadow. That's a Death Shadow next turn. I mean, the nice thing about this is that I think our Death Shadow is probably, I guess we're going to four, which is awkward. But our Death Shadow might only need one shot. God, you ever borrow trying to use Savage? You absolute savage. Oh my god. I guess, I guess he was due. All right, we're gonna run it back the same way here. Son of a bitch. I wonder who it is, let me Google it. Logan Nettles on Twitter says that he is a Magic Online legend. And then his name is Brandon Burton. Dude, everybody likes gingerbread cookies, man. You ain't reinventing the wheel over there, all right, bro? Yeah, we got one follow tonight. Yes. I need more follows from you guys. Need more follows? I can then, my credit from Card Hoarder becomes larger, and I can eventually, this is my goal, I can eventually stream Legacy, which is what I want to do. I, I got, like, the intoxication of playing Delver, and now I'm just like, nothing else is equal, and I want to play more Delver. And with my credit goal, I can almost play Delver, but not quite. All right, so this hand is weird. I think we're going to keep it, but I can definitely see this hand being weird. I have to, like, there's another one where you have to thread the needle. Like, I've got to get my dash out of large enough. Oh, you don't celebrate Christmas? I feel good. I, like, that's okay. I feel bad for you because, like, Christmas is awesome, but I'm sure that you do something else that's also it's great, you know, like. So, yeah, I don't feel that bad for you. But I love Christmas. Oh, Sandy Dog is the guy that had his mom play for him. That's really, that's actually, that's really cool. That is very cool. That is very cool. Hey, viewers, guys. I appreciate everybody for showing up. I think this might be my last, last match of the night. Maybe one more. I usually stream two leagues, but I'm pretty tired. And I have to upload two videos to YouTube, which you all should check out my YouTube channel below. There, yeah, I'm trying to get uh, that monetized. I'm about a third of the way the views I need to it to get monetized, which I don't know what will happen. I know that I'm getting like, you know, going up in views, which only makes sense as you stream more decks, you can help more people. But, but yeah, if you guys like what you see, you should follow me on here and subscribe there. So I will start with this one because it's the worst fetch land now. What is this? 
All right, Goblin Guide. The big question is, do I let this Goblin Guide hit me? Let's put our top card. We have a Street Wraith. So do I take two from this Goblin Guide? 18, 12, I still, it still dies to... But then if I go push, he kills it. I actually think I'm gonna take this shot and then I'm gonna go to 15 and I'm gonna kill it. I don't think that the I don't think the street race is where we wanna be. Probably not playing the Death Shadow next turn now that I fetched it away. Wow, that's good. So if I tick up on this, all right, I think I, I think I messed up there. All right, I'm going to play this Death Shadow here. It's going to cause put some pressure on him because he can I'm going to give him the opportunity to burn it. I missequenced here a little bit. And I can use this collective brutality to get delirium if I need to to get another death shadow. But I definitely missequenced here a little bit cuz I thought in my head like oh, if I fetch and kill this goblin guide, then my street rate's going to be there. So I just like had a missequence or two in there. Which was bad bad sequencing. Which, in all reality, sequencing is half of this deck. Like, if you can figure out how to sequence playing Death Shadow, then, like, you're going to be in a good spot. Well, thank you for giving the follow there. Subscribe on YouTube, man. You can see all these meme streams here. All right, so I'm going to get in with, I'm going to shock myself down to 10. Might change the idea now. Gosh. I don't want to tap out now. I guess we're going to go in and attack first. And then I'll just cast this Brutality. I think now we stub this. Sequencing and top decking. Dude, better lucky than good. We're just going to take a card from their hand. Question is, do I escalate and ditch this Liliana? This allows me to get another Death Shadow. I think I'm going to... But what do I escalate? Because I don't want to gain and drain. Maybe I want to gain and drain. What, what could he have that gets me here? I really want to get Delirium, I think. I don't know if this Liliana is going to do it for me. So I can just minus here, do this, and then I can go get another Death Shadow. Do you think that's an interesting play there? I don't know enough in the burn thing. I think I'm going to just shrink my Death Shadow, get Delirium, take a card, then I'm traverse for another Death Shadow next turn. Like that's that's what I feel like I should... like that like That like, is like what my gut tells me to do. And then when I think with my brain, it doesn't necessarily come out right, you know? Alternatively, I can just make that play next turn, but then I can't play the Death Shadow. But I really want to get Delirium. I think I'm just going to, I think I'm going to escalate this with two modes. I don't even think I'm going to gain life. I think I'm just going to... Well, this is, this is awkward. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to gain life. I think I'm just going to neg two, neg two my death shadow. 
get Delirium, and then put two Death Shadows on the board. Yeah, this is weird. All right, we'll take that Lightning Helix. So now you can suspend a Rift Bolt and get one of my Death Shadows off the battlefield if he needs to. I'm not, I really am not, I don't have any sort of confidence whether that play was right or not. All I know is I want to draw a Street Wraith or a Fetch Land next turn. Yeah, I agree with that, Radial. I just don't, like, that was weird. Like, I just, it's unconventional magic. So I think my opponent goes Foothills, Fetch, Suspend, Rift Bolt. Conveniently, we're at 10. So... I really would like to draw a fetch land because then it, it like puts my opponent in the squeeze to where I don't have to commit any life. I can just attack him for three, play another overgrown tomb or play another death shadow. Then he has to decide, do I hit this death shadow? Cause I don't, cause then if he goes up at me, he's dealing six damage to himself basically. And it's going to take him four spells to kill me or he has to hit exactly whatever it is, Boros Charm in one of these two draws, or he has to go runner, runner. This is all just difficult. It's difficult and it's awkward. Because, like, pl playing Death Shadow, this is why playing Death Shadow is so much fun. Like, <clears throat> that play didn't really make sense what I did, but in some ways it felt like it was the right thing to do because I thought that getting Delirium and getting this Death Shadow was really important. <clears throat> and I might just... What is this? He's going to suspend. <clears throat> Plays his Wooded Foothills, suspends his Rift Bowl. Okay. I again think I'm just going to go get Death Shadow. Like if my opponent wants to spend one of these burn spells hitting my... I'm, I'm top decking really well in this, this match. If my opponent wants to spend one of his burn spells killing one of my Death Shadows, then that's alright. I would be willing to bet he sneaked... He snuck... He... So it is fun playing against burn. A lot of fun. You play four color with blue? I'm thinking about trying a four color version with blue, to tell you the truth. Now, if my opponent's got like another way to kill, if, they, if my opponent can just kill both my death shadows, then like that's pretty bad. No, they're running my head. Okay? That is interesting. I played Hazaret in my deck a little while ago. So if I draw a land, a fetch land, then my opponent's dead. Because there's no way, okay. Hello. Wow, we ripped like savages. In this round. Now he's going to need Path and Deflecting Palm. What I didn't like about Hazret <clears throat> is that Hazret did not work very well with the, um, what was I going to say? What I didn't like about Hazaret is that 
it didn't work very well with counter spells. But I often found I was incentivized to have counter spells and Hazard in my deck at the same time, and those two didn't work too well together. I much rather I think Hazard's better in a four color version that has white in it and not blue. I have a video on my YouTube page on how I played I played through like two leagues with Hazard. <clears throat> I want to try, a, like, so I was actually tweaking with this. I'm going to play one more match. Get eight matches in tonight. I was playing a version with this. That was in, where is it? Four Color Shadow. And uh, I guess I got to find, and instead of having these in here, I want um, some, like, just more Snapcasters to make the mana base better. I would like to play first. Love Quan, I don't know who that is. This hand. If my opponent gives me so you can't mulligan these hands playing Death Shadow, because like these are the hands that if you get the right draw or the right opponent, you're just gonna absolutely savage them. There's not much they can do. Yeah, I do the same thing, Methlem. But like you can't really have the death shadow, you can't really have the, uh, gosh, what was I was going to say. So you, you're probably going to take my dismember. You can't really have the uh, blue cards in the main deck, though. I don't even think you can have Hazret as, like, your four drop main drop main deck card, like a traversable target, and have stubs in your deck, game one. <clears throat> Takes traverse, okay. All right. Oh, this Maelstrom Pulse is going to suck. What kind of a keep is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm just going to take a fatal push. And then just be careful. Hopefully find another discard spell. Well, this is just like an atrocious keep. What are you doing? Now I'm definitely going to take this pulse. Or I can just take this male, I can take this fatal. Yeah, that's just like not a very good move. I'm just gonna be an adult. It's too fast for Hazard Rain. Okay. Yeah, dude, this is what you get, you greedy. We can't punish him. Come on, dude, give me a target. We'll just cast this and we'll wait. We'll do it on his turn. I thought it lands a Liliana. It's kind of annoying, but we have to stub it actually, so it's not that annoying. Forgot that we had that. <clears throat> Tarn the Goyf. I actually don't think we want this Goyf. We got Overgrown Tomb. Uh, MTGO bot coming in hot on time there. Come on. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that I just play two Death Shadows. I think I don't think it's a good move to play all three because I would like to stub one of these Lilianas. And then be more insulated against it when it comes down. My opponent goes like stub stub or push push. That kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? Rupt K, okay. They're being man efficient. It's a good magical move.
that's what we needed that for. All right, I think we're going fast here. We're just going to crack for six, play another Death Shadow, and then, like, hopefully that's enough. We'll get the Breeding Pool. So my opponent's dead on board, and I know they have a push, but, like, I can answer their next play, and they need to basically have two answers. Okay, there's a Glyph. You got a Glyph and a Fatal Push. Fatal Push your dude. God, we have ripped hot these last two games. Don't slaughter pack me, bro. Don't slaughter pack me, bro. And my opponent's a moron. Like, that's just an absolute egregious keep from them in game one. You can never, you just in those, with those decks, you cannot keep 20, in a, in a 24 land decks, you can't keep one landers. Like I have no pity for my opponent. Slaughter Pact is not black You are right there. We zoned. Okay, we don't want these rages. Um, that's 60 on the dot. I don't really like Niall Spellbomb in these matchups because I don't, unless I see Lingering Souls. TDBR, Dr. Grizzant. I do not, I don't pick up on the reference there. I'm a pop culture loser. All right, we got a heater. I'm just gonna spell well. Okay, so this is getting an overgrown tomb. For sure. What do we got? We want that. The card literally says like he can't beat it on it. God, dude, my opponent is such an idiot. He probably has to now he's gonna pop this ghost. He has to pop this Niall spell bomb if he misses the land drop here. You have to pop your mind. Oh my god. I'm triggered. What is this? Shenanigans. God, I'm just so triggered that I didn't even, shouldn't have even taken that Liliana. I should have taken the Maelstrom Pulse. I'm just like, I'm just completely, uh, I'm just completely like, flabbergasted, wamboozled. Nice land. Alright, we want to find Liliana. Oh. Would have been nice to get Liliana there. See, like, I definitely should have taken this Maelstrom Pulse. With my second thought sees, I was just like so tilt town USA that I didn't do it. All right, we're not gonna play into his mana if my opponent would like to fatal push one of these, and that's his right. Yeah, dude. I got triple time goif. <clears throat> I would like to draw another land so I can go double goif. Oh, baby. All right, we're just going to attack. I'm going to play Liliana, and I'm going to tick up, and I'm going to ditch my Erupt Decay. I might not even tick up. Yeah, I think we're just gonna I think we're just gonna play it and pass. Because like if my opponent wants to use their mana to kill this, like I have enough threat stored up here. Where if my opponent deems this Liliana is that important, then they can. They can do that. Yep. Yeah. 
And now we're going to play Tarmogoyf and Death Shadow playing around this the best. Playing around this Maelstrom Pulse. Opponent knows that I've got an Abrupt Decay. Now that's just my opponent's dead six ways to Sunday. Because they're, they're cause, cause my opponent's an idiot. Like, you know, like, it, it sucks to be mean about something like that, but, like, they did it two games in a row. You know, like, you, you're you not a Death Shadow deck. You are not that low to the ground, you know? And now they got to play a time of life. Okay, we'll just... So now we don't even have to dismember this and get two for one. We're just going to fetch another green source here. Take three if my opponent wants to. Um, my opponent wants to like use a removal spell here. I don't want to get two for one with this dismember. And now we'll go like this, and then we'll go here. Well, I guess there's no real reason for me to flash back this Lingering Souls. My opponent goes to kill this Tarmogoyf and attack. Oh, I guess that was a reason to flash back Lingering Souls. But that'll leave me just dead. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right, we're in good shape. I bet my opponent, like, forgot about that. I got some sad pandas in chat, I'd be willing to bet. Attack with these two. Now we can actually dismember our own token <clears throat> if my opponent has another Maelstrom Pulse. Sometimes you get a gift in the 3-0 bracket. This is my opponent just making mistakes. I guess I guess I'm being too critical, but like I just hate how people think you can keep one landers with these kind of decks. <clears throat> You can't. You're not a one-land deck. If you want, you have to play a clunky, mopey mid-range game. If you do not want to play a clunky, mopey mid-range game, if you want to play that, like if you want to be low to the ground, play Death Shadow. But yes. So everybody, um, again, thank you very much here for showing up. I appreciate all of you. Um, if you'd like to follow, I'll be streaming the Modern Challenge on Saturday. Please, if you like what you see, hit the follow button and then check out my YouTube page, <clears throat> which is linked below. But besides that, I really hope everyone has a fantastic rest of their night and see you guys later.